Hello, my love. If you have clicked this video, then you have seen the title regarding what we're here for. And we're going to be doing a collective meditation, collective prayer, quantum healing, uh, mix in a little bit of remote viewing because I like that. And ultimately be bringing a lot of love, not only to yourself and your own system, if you are processing a lot right now, makes sense. So let's bring some love into your own vessel first, so that you can radiate that outwards. And we'll also be bringing a lot of love and healing energy to the areas that are in conflict right now. Uh, before I get into this any further, I am going to be very specific and careful and selective with my words because I've had instances on multiple platforms where I have been banned in the past for speaking out about these things and about corruption and government issues. Big Daddy Gov don't like that. <laughs> and that's one thing that is definitely really heavy on my heart today that is going to be incorporated in this meditation. It's going to be a lot of love, a lot of light, and also a little bit of spice with taking down in the energetic planes those who are pulling the strings. Um, so please support me in not being flagged by not using emojis or words that are being flagged right now. So please feel free to sprinkle comments with as much love as possible because ultimately that's what we're here for. We are one human race and what is going on on the planet and has been going on on the planet for far beyond you and I have even been here is atrocious and it's not okay. And we can collectively and individually continue to bring healing and I personally believe it starts individually. It starts with us. Your emotions, no matter what side of this story you are on right now, your emotions are valid. Chances are you have a reason for your perception. You've been taught things, you've seen things, maybe you've experienced things firsthand. Uh, your subconscious holds on to that. So this has become a part of your identity and your life story. And when there are things that seem unfair to that, it triggers even more and it can bring up heavy emotions. It can bring up anger, fear, trauma. So we're not about bypassing that and I'm not taking away from your experience or your truth. With that said, someone else might have a very different truth because of their experiences, their beliefs, their upbringing, uh, and what their subconscious believes to be true. Separate that even more and go one layer deeper, history and the indoctrination that every single country has endured in their own way has also deeply, deeply impacted the psyche and the subconscious of everyone. And it has influenced a lot of narratives. You can look at this in any single country. I'm from Canada. We have um, our own colonization and genocides that have happened here. And our government's not done anything to fix it. I don't believe my personal family lineage was involved in it but I'm part of the lucky, so to say, or the privileged is the word actually. I'm part of the privileged who has land, has water, has electricity, has shelter, has things uh, because of past generations. So we could look at it either way. I could be grateful that I have these things or I could be angry and outraged for how they were acquired. And I think also it's important to note that both of those sides of the spectrum can exist here, where I can be grateful for what I have, but I can be very aware and acknowledge the fact of there were people who lost things for me to gain this, for my lineage, for other white settlers to gain this, right? Um, I 
personally always promote a higher perspective awareness. So as I continue forward, like I said, I'm not going to get too much into the political side of these things, into the issue itself, because I am not nearly educated enough and I'm not here to add to division and I'm not here to think that my opinion is right and someone else's is wrong. What I am here to do on the planet is to read patterns and read people. And I see patterns <laughs> like very easily. They just like pop up in front of me and make themselves known. And I'm like, hmm, that's this thing going on again. Or that's that happening. Or funny how they're doing this again. You know, funny how... <sighs> The governments stir the pot. Funny how the media is influencing things. And that's a pattern. Uh, it's quite an obvious pattern, I would say, at this point. So I'm not acting like I'm a rocket scientist for seeing it. I know a lot of people are well aware of what's going on on those levels and layers. But where I want to draw attention to, because I had a little nap. I had this topic heavy on my heart. I wanted to do a collective meditation because I feel like there's not much else I can do. There's not much I can do in the physical realm uh, to combat what's going on. But the energetic is more powerful than the physical. Whether you have come to that understanding yourself yet or not, that's okay. I hope and pray that someday you do because you'll realize that energetically you are freaking powerful and you are one with God. You are one with the creator. This is beyond religion. This is beyond belief systems and constructs. Uh, this is beyond borders. This is beyond all of that. You are a fractal of the creator. And the creator loves all of his creations. There's not one creation that is better than the other. We are all one. And the more you start to connect to energy, the more you start to come back to your heart and out of the indoctrination, out of the programming, out of the trauma, the fear, the anger, the pain-based reactions or your pain body that's holding onto all these years, possibly generations, possibly lifetimes of trauma and heaviness, when you can come out of that and you do some healing to release these layers, and you do come back more and more into your heart, you can soften back into that remembrance that truly at the end of the day, we are all one. We all just have been indoctrinated and had different seeds planted and had different experiences that coincide. So before this tangent, I was about to say that I had the nap I wanted to have some food first because I'm really hungry, but I just kept getting all these different messages and it was like this thing streaming through really strongly and then this thing streaming through really strongly and I was like, ooh, I gotta make sure I say that and like the wording of everything was so perfect and I was like, okay, <laughs> higher self, spirit guides, team, God, like can you please just chill, give me 30 minutes, I just want to eat my apples and peanut butter so that I'm not hungry um, please bring these messages through in 30 minutes and I will go channel them. I will go speak what is on my heart and what, what's, yeah, coming through me. But then I was like, no, I need to go do this right now. But one of those thoughts that was coming through really strong, um, is something I said to my mom the other day, because... My brother Derek, he passed away uh, when he was 21 and I was 18 uh, in 2011. But growing up, we loved playing board games. Our family, uh, maybe not so much as a family, but definitely my mom, my brother and I, and then Derek and I and our friends, his best friends. Him and his best friends played Risk all the time. The game of world domination. And what I had the ping, the little like light bulb moment reminder about 
is how I used to sit down every every day because my my highlight of my life growing up was spending time with my brother. So him and his friends playing video games, I was there watching <laughs> quietly, just giggling at them um, and enjoying being there. They're playing Risk, I was there. They're watching Lord of the Rings, I'm there. He's playing World of Warcraft, I'm there. Uh, they're playing sports outside, running around, I'm there. You know, whatever it was, I was always wanting to be a part of it. Playing guitar, jamming out to Red Hot Chili Peppers, like you name it, I was there. But the thing about Risk, whether you've played it or not, you probably know about it. The thing about Risk is the four, in this case, young gentlemen, my brother and his friends, <clears throat> the four young gentlemen who are sitting around the board game, they are pulling the strings, but they're not in the line of fire, right? They're not putting their life on the line in combat, but they're the ones in control. And I forget the exact name of the pieces, right? But you've got like the little soldier piece. You've got the little guy with his spear or something or sword. And then you've got the guy on the horse who's like considered five people or however it worked. But the person playing the game is the one who is manipulating. They are the one who is striking deals with the fellow players, right? And Derek was really, really good at this because he had a beautiful smile. He was incredibly charming and incredibly intelligent. And he would look at this game and he would see, oh, if I say this thing to this person and we team up here, we make an alliance for something, but then I get access to these resources or then I can do X, Y, Z and actually still be the one in power, right? He had this way and like even thinking about it, I remember like it drove his friends crazy because no matter what, he somehow always won and he'd make promises with all of them and then end up conquering the world. And they'd be like, <laughs> I don't get it. And they'd try so hard not to make a deal with him or to create alliances like against him even or like all the things. And somehow he always found a way. And why I thought of this the last few days as well as today is because as I kind of started this video off, I'm a lover of humanity. I'm a lover of people. I'm a lover of beautiful souls that have experienced trauma and experienced things that they don't deserve. And I'm a lover of love, we could say. And I believe at the core essence, every single person on this planet just wants love. Every single person just wants to feel safe and secure. And I believe every single person deserves to have their basic needs met. The toppling inequality uh, is not okay. And it's always, always bothered me and it's always made me feel sick and outraged and angry and want to fight as much as I could against who knows who because I never had access to like fight any of these people. Um, but I always saw that it was not the people who were the problem. It was the indoctrination, the beliefs, as I said, what they believe to be true. And is that actually true? Uh, because majority of textbooks, textbooks are written with a purpose, y'all. They're written with a purpose. They are very, it's very easy to write a book and change the context, spin the narrative. Books aren't truth, like they're not necessarily fact. And it doesn't take very long in terms of years for people to pass away who actually lived it. And that fact can be wiped out or changed, right? We see this, there's proof of this. 
It's not new. So I was always aggravated by that. And I was always aggravated by the fact that those who call themselves in charge don't actually have the best interests of the greater population. <clears throat> and we, we as in normal folk, uh, as in the 99%, as in the motherfucking force that could come together and unite and change all of it if we weren't battling each other. <sighs> We're the ones who miss out and who are taken advantage of and who are left in a sort of victim state because of the 1% who are pulling the strings. So I love my brother, but thank God he's not in the government. <laughs> Just kidding. I think he would be great. Um, but watching someone play Risk and seeing their ability to... Obviously, there's no empathy involved in that because it's a little toy piece. He wasn't actually, he would never actually send real people to go do these things. But we have people in power right now who are so desensitized to these things and who are so corrupted by their own beliefs, their own values, their own egotistical need for power, their own greed, as well as people who are in control of these things who are also being forced or manipulated or having their strings pulled. The levels go deep, the rabbit hole goes, the rabbit hole goes deep. So I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> but the fight is with the system. The fight is with the higher ups. The fight is with the people sitting around the board game, pulling the strings, making the choices, knowing full well that lives are at stake. And whether it's that they don't care, whether it's that, like I said, there's greed or ego involved, whether they do care, uh, but they feel backed in a corner or trapped or like someone's pulling their strings and forcing them to do it. I don't have the answers to that. Uh, it's something um, maybe I'll remote view on later to be like, what's going on here? Um, but the thing is, is like, there's that quote that goes around often in these times when another form of separation or what's the word? Uh, it's, I mean, it's definitely part of their distraction and collecting fear energy and trying to make people feel helpless, even, you know, trying to, trying to hold everyone down in a state of fear and trauma by creating these things and by the narratives they push on the news about these things. Um, but it's a separation tactic, right, that keeps us fighting one another instead of looking up and going, wait a minute, you pulled the strings. Wait a minute, you did this. You started that. Or you're the one who sold, sold out the whole country for something you thought we needed or wanted, right? And this goes beyond this current issue because as I said, I am not educated enough to speak super confidently on what I believe in regarding this. I have strong beliefs, but I don't think I'd be able to communicate them as eloquently as I'm hopefully communicating the rest of this just regarding the higher perspective, energetic perspective, um, influence, big daddy gov control vibes. So where that leaves us is the quote I was going to say that circulates quite often in times of chaos. And it's that story about when you put red ants and black ants in a jar together, they get along just fine. They do their things, they build their different holes and tunnels and stuff. There's no problem. But someone comes along and shakes up the jar and suddenly there's distress 
suddenly they start attacking each other, killing each other because they don't understand what happened. They didn't see the hand that came in and shook it all up. They're just in their, in their first person process, in their first person reality, which is where most people live their life, um, myself included, until I started doing more healing work that allowed me to see from a higher perspective uh, more often. But when you only see one thing and then suddenly your whole house is shaken and this is shaken and this is going on and these are the people that are there and they start attacking one another and now these ants that were living in harmony are attacking one another. And I don't want this to sound like I'm referring to people as ants because that sounds degrading too. And that's not the point. The point is, it's the hand that's the problem. It's the higher ups that's the problem. It's the system that's a problem. It's the generations of control, indoctrination. Um, every single country, as well as every single religion, has been groomed for a certain narrative, groomed to believe certain things. And that's wild when you think about it, isn't it? That your whole life with the media, with the government, with society, with the education system, wherever you currently live or where you grew up, you were being groomed. It's a different word than indoctrinated. Pretty much means the same thing. Um, but the higher ups always knew what they were grooming you for. They always knew what they were preparing and how they were spinning narratives to match their agenda down the line. <clears throat> so before I go further into rabbit holes, <clears throat> excuse me, and before I get lost on more tangents. Let's just say, <clears throat> that it's horrible what's happening, but it's beautiful that people are waking up to what's beyond, behind it. And I had this really cool experience in May. I was flying back from Malaysia. I had just been there for three months. I stopped in the UK for like 20 hours, maybe less than that. And I went like two hours south to visit friends and their new baby. And then I had to take and, and grab a suitcase I had left there. And then I called an Uber I booked an Uber to head back up to Heathrow to fly back into Canada. And after having a little snooze in the back of the Uber because I hadn't slept for like 20 hours or 48 hours with travel delays and missing a flight and over complications and then stress and just like chaos, trying to find new flights, all the things. So I was wiped. So I had a little snooze in the back of the Uber and then I woke up. And the driver kind of giggled at me and he's like, <laughs> like, you're tired. And I, so I explained, I was like, well, I tried to, yeah, I had just had this many hours of flights, but I should have already been here, missed the flight, blah, blah, blah. So after a little mockery for my poor travel, uh, travel decisions and um, why I should not be a... Uh, why I should not work at a travel office <laughs> booking flights for people because clearly I'm not good at that after all these years of travel you would think it would be the opposite but we talked about that and then he started to share about how he's from Turkey and I was actually supposed to go to Turkey before instead of Malaysia but the morning I was going to book my flights was the morning of the earthquake so obviously I didn't end up going and felt really insensitive to go on like holiday to somewhere that has just been 
struck by so much tragedy. Um, so anyway, he was from Turkey, had been living in the UK for, I think, almost a decade. And we started talking because the Turkey election was the next day. Or maybe it was even later that day. He was so excited about it. And he started talking to me about what it's like in Turkey and the corruption in their government and in their education system, the ways that there are no jobs if you're educated and the education system or post-secondary is basically promoting people to just be in like hospital, either hospitality or like, um, what do we call them? Like trades kind of jobs. But the really high educated jobs, there's no, there's nothing for them there. I believe this Uber driver, I wish I remembered his name. He was like, he had his degree in engineering or something like super intelligent super intelligent but there were no jobs there so he ended up moving to London and became a taxi driver and an uber driver which he was doing great he was happy for himself the reason why I'm sharing this story is because as he was telling it he was asking about what Canada was like growing up and he was saying how you know we have so much freedom and how much better our government is And I was like, well, depends who you ask, depends, depends who you talk to. And so we got into it and he was shocked by it. Um, And I said, no, most Canadians just believe everything on the TV. And hopefully that's a hyper generalization because I think the last few years have woken more people up. But I was like, growing up, we had our own form of government corruption, government control, um, media influence, uh, really challenge, like same thing for jobs and different, different issues, but very similar in a lot of ways. And it was fascinating for both of us because he was like, whoa, I just thought that Canada had like had it made and had all these things and I was like we do in a lot of ways by no means uh am I not acting like there's a lot of privilege here and a lot of freedom because there there has been so I'm not trying to compare it to other countries we we probably do look amazing to that but in terms of the government systems and the leaders and the political corruption and the people who are in control who say one thing and then do the other, who continue to lie through their teeth and manipulate to gain more power, but then don't actually care about the greater good of the people. It's the same. And it was such a cool conversation. Uh, That's one of the things I love about travel. But it was so cool to realize that like, even though there were some really big differences with our education growing up, um, he, you know, he talked about certain things they were taught that weren't actually true. And like the narratives in their education system that pushed certain things. And as you got older and could research or study or look elsewhere, you could see that this actually wasn't the truth. This was manipulated to indoctrinate. And I was like, That's the same with us, right? Like this goes on everywhere in the world, Um, which is why we're going to send some love. I'm going to rein myself in here now. I feel like I've shared all the specific messages that were coming through when I was wanting to eat my apples. (laughs) So we're going to... In this collective meditation, before we get into it, I want to preface the power that you hold as an energetic being and the power that you hold in your heart. Your heart, it has been proven in studies that your heart is one of the most powerful energetic vortexes, that the energetic frequency that radiates out of your heart space when you are in a state of love 
is like, I don't even know how many times more powerful than the energetic frequency from your brain. So in a world that has been taught to live from the mind, live from your thinking, live from your brain, and yet your heart is actually more powerful. And studies have proven what like mystics and ancients have known forever, right? So we're going to bring in a lot of love, as I said, for self, for others, for humanity, for the areas that are currently um, going through this horrible time. Uh, all the innocent souls, no matter what side, no matter what age, race, gender, religion, what side of the border. And one thing I invite you to do, whether you have a belief in God or a higher power, whatever name, because the name also causes division. And this isn't about a fucking name. This is about the energy. So I like to refer to as a living living God, like the true living essence. It's not some dead inorganic thing. It's not just a word. It's not got any kind of like pain or negativity. It's like a living and loving God, a creator that, as I said, designed each and every one of us perfectly for what we're here to do and who we're here to be and makes no mistakes. So it's that whole love thy neighbor because thy neighbor is also God and also part of God, just as you are a part of God. So let's remove any weirdness around that word or any separation around that word because God is love, God is unity consciousness at the end of the day. Um, so war doesn't have a place here. Um, in my opinion. And we're going to connect to God, connect to the creator, feel that energy, <clears throat> feel that like loving embrace. And then we're also going to bring in higher dimensional realms. Um, so 3D realm we just see people and we see animals. There's millions of different types of uh, animal species that coexist and inhabit this planet with us, right? Millions of other 3D physical species. Uh, but you're not just a 3D being. You are a multidimensional being. You exist on other planes in other dimensions. 4D, 5D, 60, 70, 80, 90. 10, 11, 12, like you exist on all these planes, even though right now as you're watching it, you are most likely only aware of the 3D, possibly a little bit more aware of others. Um, so <clears throat> just like there are a lot of species, other living species in the 3D, there's a lot of other living species in the 4D, the 5D, 60, all the other dimensions. There's a lot of life in the universe and our loving creator has created a lot of beautiful, beautiful beings. So we're going to invite in any higher dimensional realms, uh, angels, spirit guides, galactic beings, um, yeah, forces of light, forces of good. The 3D earth is not alone in what's happening right now and... 3D humanity. People are not alone in what's happening right now, though sometimes we can't always understand it because we can't see it, but there are higher dimensional realms and beings at play supporting the highest good. And so we're going to call them in in this meditation as well to just really flood the areas with as much loving frequency as we can. And I invite you to be open to the fact that time doesn't exist the same way in the higher dimensions. And so you might be listening to this recording uh, right as I'm uploading it. You might be listening to this a week from now, two weeks from now, months from now. 
and the power, the energetic presence will still be felt, it still matters, and it still will be sent. So even if someone watched this, say like 10 years down the road, even less time than that, but like, say things are all perfect and beautiful and this is all, this chapter is fully closed, but you come across this meditation, hi, <laughs> hi future, hi from the future, um, or hi from the past, I guess, but like welcome and you still have so much influence so continuing to send love and harmonious energies and light to these different countries to these different places to the earth in general is a beautiful thing and it is always felt by those who are open to it so in the way that time doesn't exist in the quantum realm um i could send energy and loving energy right now uh, and someone could feel it in the future and like they might not understand it came from me i might not understand it came from me but energy ah this was the other thought i wanted to have energy doesn't die energy just changes form so you sending loving energy uh that energy doesn't die that energy goes somewhere <clears throat> whether we can see it or not it's still moving and just as heavy negative emotions in the body, those emotions don't die. They don't end, which is why it's so important to learn how to transmute them and shift them into higher vibrational emotions because the energy itself doesn't die. It cannot be killed. It li lives for infinity, you know, it always exists but it changes form. So if you have anger in your body and you don't want to have anger in your body for your whole life, you can't like fight the anger to get rid of it. You can't like kill the anger to get rid of it. Uh, it's not going to die. What you can do is release it or transmute it. So releasing it through movement through shouting through journaling through crying through processing in whatever way you need helps to move that energy out of your body and as you do that you can then start to bring more space for uh calmness or acceptance or neutrality and then eventually for the energies like love and gratitude and excitement and more of the positive feelings so energy doesn't die it just changes form so that means that things we do now will still be sent can still be felt for a long time from now i have crazy quantum stories of me getting huge waves of energy or feeling or emotion or visions or things and years down the line i go uh I end up doing a healing practice for that version of me and it's kind of this weird time time warp where you're like was past version of me feeling future Kara healing this and that's why she was so overwhelmed or like why she didn't feel alone was past version of me in her grief or her heaviness feeling the higher dimensional aspects of myself holding her I mean, that's how my connection to God began was uh, through my darkest days, just really getting the sense that there was something so much bigger and so deeply loving that was present and supporting me. So whenever you listen to this, there is so much power in what you are not only holding space for within yourself, but also sending outwards to others. So that's why at the end of the day, it's all about love. And that's why I encourage you to focus on what is going to help feel good and raise the vibration of the planet because we all know it's heavy. And again, I'm not bypassing or ignoring it, but I don't want to add to the heaviness because it's already heavy. I want to add to the lightness and I want to add to a moment of reprieve 
for someone who's open to receiving it and feeling it or um, an openness and a miracle coming through for those who feel guided and end up in the right place at the right time or a little bit of that spice with taking down the governments in the higher levels <laughs> so that they don't have as much influence as or things don't maybe work the way they wanted or something changes you know infinite possible timelines exist infinite realities and ways that this can play out and the power of our consciousness is that what we focus on grows so if we focus on the absolute worst case scenario we are projecting your life force energy into that reality and I don't know about you, but I've seen a pattern where when I focus on the bad thing or stress about it a lot, I tend to create it. You know, you manifest the things that you don't want because you've been focusing on them so much. And so if collectively <clears throat> we can come together and focus on the highest timeline and focus on what we do want to see. And that's why... I'm focusing less on like picking a side and more just on unity in general. If we can focus on that and put our powerful consciousness being projected towards that desire, um, hands down, it will make an impact. Even if you might not see it immediately or feel it immediately. <clears throat> so with all that said, we've talked a lot and by we, I mean me. <laughs> Um, I would love to invite you to move your body quick for a couple minutes. So I'm going to tell you some ideas and then you can hit pause and then we will sit down and do the quantum healing. So <clears throat> it's been 41 minutes and you might have just been sitting here listening to this. Maybe you listened to it all at once. Maybe you broke it up, whatever the case may be. What emotions are in your body right now? If you feel any kind of heaviness, stress, tension, anger, overwhelm, sadness, grief, trauma, <clears throat> you name it, whatever it is, um, let's get up and shake your body. So you can just be like shaking it around, flailing, do whatever you need, kind of hopping on the spot like jittering, almost like you're standing on one of those vibration machines um, to just help move energy in your body and um, or dance around a little bit if you need to. If you feel a lot of anger and you need to release things verbally, I'm going to encourage you to scream, shout, let it all out. <laughs> uh, if you're at a place where there are people around and you don't have a full uh, freedom to express yourself that way. One practice that is beautiful is either sh shouting into a pillow or I will, when I'm in that situation, feel the anger and feel the emotions coming up and do the full on yell, except I just keep the sound from getting to its full expression, if that makes sense. So <clears throat> I'd be like, And it's almost like you're doing the crowd cheering when you're pretending to be like ah, cheering in like the background at a concert or something. You know, they do that on the movies sometimes. So like get the energy, the heaviness and shake it out, scream it out, move it out, hit pause when you feel released a little bit, when you feel like your body is a little bit less stiff perhaps or tense just even from sitting here for a while like you feel a little bit more loose and able to relax that's going to allow you to drop into the meditation so much deeper my lighting feels really weird now because my little tiny ring light just ran out of battery which is also a sign that I talked too long so I want you to be able to feel relaxed for the meditation, whether you are sitting or laying down. You're going to get in a position where your spine is straight. 
Um, if you fall asleep, if you're laying down and you fall asleep, that's beautiful, that's okay. Your subconscious is still listening and your energetic body, your soul, your essence is still taking it in. You are still sending love and powerful healing energy even if you fall asleep and even if your conscious mind is not aware of what's taking place. That's the beauty of this work is that your conscious mind doesn't need to be aware. Your conscious mind doesn't need to understand and logically make sense of everything that's happening because we are working beyond the conscious mind and we're working beyond the logical 3D realm in this practice. So there's no right or wrong. If you drift off, that's okay. Um, just focus on love. That's what this is all about. I love you so much. Thank you for being here. I'm really excited to do this practice with you. So this is the moment where I would say hit pause, jump, move around, bathroom break, do whatever you need, get loose in your body, and I will be back. You can click pause to return, and then we'll get into the meditation. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you feel a little bit already a little bit lighter or more loose, more relaxed as we go into this meditation. So you can find a comfortable position, as I said before, either seated with your back straight, maybe you're sitting directly with a wall behind you so that you can just lean against the wall. If you're comfortable in meditative pose, that's fine too, or honestly laying down it's always a good time. <laughs> it's always my favorite way to meditate is just get horizontal. So whatever you do, ideally back and spine is straight. So if you're laying down, you can lay in Shavasana with your palms facing up to receive as well as uh, send out beautiful loving energy uh, as we go through this. So get in your comfortable position. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for using the power. It makes me want to cry. Thank you for using the power of who you are and the power of your energetic field, the power of your incredible heart and soul and the power of your consciousness to send it towards something good and to send it towards something more positive in a very dark time. As I said, what we focus on grows so we can continue to fuel more negativity, more fear, more hate, more wars, more things like this, or we can do the work ourselves to see bigger pictures, to heal and release our own personal traumas, our own personal biases, our own personal experiences or perspectives or things that are keeping us in separation consciousness, keeping us feeling separate from the other. And as we do this, it does impact every single person you come in contact with. It impacts everyone in your community, your environment, um, and it does impact the planet at a greater scale than you probably consciously could ever understand. It's like mind blowing. It's hard for me to wrap my mind around it sometimes of like, whoa, this is how powerful we are. So thank you for making the choice to use that power for good and to join me in this practice today. So get comfortable. You can close your eyes. And you can just start to take a few deep breaths here as you relax in. I'm gonna be guiding you through a really gentle breath work practice. Um, just normal breathing, but we're just gonna relax into it and lengthen the inhale and lengthen the exhale as you go. Uh, typically, I like to do this breath through my nose, in, through, and out through my nose, but you are totally welcome to do it through an open mouth and a nice long sigh of relief with each exhale if that feels better for you. Honor your body in this moment, honor your body in this practice, and we'll begin. So with your eyes closed, Taking those few deep breaths, feeling hopefully a little bit lighter in your body from the movement, and take any final adjustments here if needed, if there's anything a little bit uncomfortable or 
anything that could make you feel more relaxed, maybe even taking a moment to consciously tense your muscles. So like you're clenching your fists and squeezing up your, your legs and tensing everything in your stomach, your abdominals, and then with your exhale, just relax and drop even deeper into this relaxation. And then we'll begin the conscious breathing. So on your next inhale, breathe into your body. Maybe even breathe straight into your heart. And then exhale out to release. And inhale into your heart once more, like you're filling your heart up with this oxygen. And exhale out to release. And breathe into your body, your whole body, filling it from head to toe. And exhale out. And breathe into your body once more. And this time, exhale back into your body. So like you're exhaling and you're sending all that energy to fill your body again. Just really bringing the awareness to your body. We'll do that one more time. Breathing into your body and exhaling back into your body. And now we'll breathe into your body and then exhale into your room. So filling the room around you. Breathe into your body. And then exhale into your entire house or building, feeling your energy expand into the entire building. Breathe into your body. And then exhale outside. Noticing the fresh air as your energy connects to it. Maybe there's sunlight, maybe it's nighttime. Just feeling that. Breathe into your body. And we'll do that once more. Exhaling outside, above your building, your home. And then breathe into your body. And now exhale over your neighborhood. So you're sending your energy over your neighborhood, almost like you're floating above it. Take another breath here into your body. And once again, exhale over your neighborhood, getting the sense that maybe it's like you're floating, you're flying above, looking down your entire neighborhood, or maybe you just feel the sensations as your energy connects to it. And we'll breathe into your body. And then exhale over your entire city. So expanding all the way across the city. Breathe into your body. And then exhale over your state or your province. Breathe into your body. And exhale over your country, spreading your essence, your energy all across all the corners of the country. And breathe into your body. And then exhale all the way around the earth, wrapping your energy around planet earth. We'll do that once more, breathe into your body. And exhaling around the earth like you're giving Mother Earth a big, big hug. And breathe into your body. And one more time, just wrapping around the earth and really feeling this connection, like this warm, loving embrace, this loving hug being wrapped around the planet and all who inhabit it. And then your next breath in will breathe into your body. And then exhale into outer space. So feeling yourself moving out into the stars. And breathe 
breathe into your body. And then exhale out into the galaxy, spreading across the Milky Way. Breathe into your body. And now exhaling across the entire universe. So there's galaxies upon galaxies in the universe. You're spreading so far, infinitely connected. And then we'll breathe into your body. And then exhale to God consciousness. Feeling this connection here. And continue to breathe normally. So nice relaxed inhales and relaxed exhales at whatever pace feels good to you. Truly feeling this connection to God consciousness. This is the eternal mother and father. The loving God who created you, who created me, who created all your neighbors, all the different countries, all these places, all the people who inhabit the planet, the galaxy, the universe, every living being was created by God consciousness. And allowing yourself to feel that sense of connection, that sense of unity, that beautiful sense of oneness. Like you're just being wrapped in a hug from the creator. Feeling how held and safe and supported you are. So in this moment, uh, in this instance where you are transcending time and space, you are transcending your physical body, feeling how loved and cared for you are by this creator. Knowing that it's going to be all right. I'm just hearing the words, don't worry, my child. Don't worry, my child. Feeling that love, feeling that connection. Knowing that you're safe, you're supported. Knowing that you are powerful and that your intention is powerful. And now setting the intention on being the embodiment of unconditional love. What does that feel like? Hmm. What does it feel like to not only receive that warm embrace and that wrapping of energy of unconditional love around you? To receive it, but then also to know that you can give it. Maybe even getting the sense, the feeling, or the image of like this beautiful pink and white energy wrapping around you, like this bubble. And just feeling that sense of love that's like floating around you in this space. Letting the magnitude of it sink in because you are a direct channel to God. You are a direct channel to the creator. Your source never runs out. You have an infinite supply and infinite access to this source. So just feeling that unconditional love, like flowing through you, flowing around you, moving in different directions, wrapping around your body. Maybe you feel it coming in from the toes 
all the way up the legs, the mid body, up to the head and down your arms. Maybe you feel it coming in the reverse, coming in from the top of your head, from your crown, almost like a wave of water washing over you or like you're standing under a waterfall as this unconditional love pours down and cleanses every part of who you are. Just taking a few deep breaths into this unconditional love. And now we're about to be the channel to bridge this and bring this to the areas that are currently at war, to the areas that currently need it the most on the planet. If you're listening to this at a later date, feel free to bring that energy wherever you're guided because God knows the whole world needs it in some way or another. So trust the calling of where you are being pulled to bring this right now but I'm just seeing like a beautiful beam of this pink and white light, a huge spotlight. It's like raining and radiating down towards the Middle East, towards all the innocents here. And Seeing it flood over the land, flood over the population, this beautiful loving energy, just as it was weaving around you, it is now interweaving through the collective there. Noticing if you feel any opposing energies, if you feel any resistance or you might get visions, you might get feelings, you might get downloads or insights. If you do, it's okay. Nothing to fight or fear, but just fill it with more love. Realizing that in this moment you are a channel, so you're helping to transmute anything that's not of the vibration of love. And that can be our base point for this meditation is that if it's love or above, we send it out, we circulate it, we feel it wrapping around the mothers, the babies, the children, the men, all, all humanity. We feel it wrapping around them And if we get the feeling of anything below the vibration of love, below that frequency, below this beautiful feeling you are tuning into right now, know that you are a powerful channel and a powerful transmuter. So anything below that vibration just gets like blasted open with more love until that energy transmutes. Remember, energy cannot die, but it can change form. Being a master alchemist here, as you're connected to a loving God, and you're just weaving in this beautiful frequency anywhere you can, anywhere you feel that it's needed. And that same sense of love that you have been feeling, that warm embrace from a creator, from the creator. Just see that all these people down there are receiving that same hug, that same love, that same warm embrace, that same beautiful energy wrapping around them, holding them tight letting them know they will be okay, letting them know they're safe, they're protected. Maybe even seeing or feeling 
those glimmers of relief by those people there. Little glimmers of hope. And now feeling that this loving energy is not only coming from you and you being the channel to God, but from every other soul who's listening to this meditation, present, future, anywhere in the world, that we're all doing this together. We're all sending this. So there's not one big beam of unconditional love flooding the area, but there's two, and then there's three, and then there's four, five, six, seven, all these beams of pink white light flooding down until there's hundreds, thousands even, and until all these beams of light are connecting with one another so that it's a spotlight on the entire area. That whole area of the planet supported by this loving frequency. Also bringing in any higher dimensional beings angels, guides, galactic beings who wish to assist and support on the higher realms with clearing out, removing any of the lower vibrational energies, any of the frequencies, any of the mind control programs that have been planted in, anything else that is influencing the darkness influencing uh, hate, fear, division. It's bringing in the higher level teams to assist in removing that, clearing that out and transmuting that so that love has a space to land. So that all this beautiful, loving, collective energy we're blasting down can ground in even deeper reaching new souls that maybe it couldn't reach before, penetrating the energy bodies, the auras, the fields of all down there. And also grounding it into the earth, feeling the earth beneath all of these feet, like the earth is getting the frequency of love. And as we continue to be in this vibration, sending healing and loving energy, we also ask for support from our guides angels, galactic beings, from God, the creator, to assist with clearing out any of the control programs from the higher dimensions and from those elite few who are pulling the strings, who are making decisions for the masses that do not support humanity. And seeing as their power, whatever they're getting access from, wherever this control is stemming from, it's like that cord is being cut. Their power is being taken away. They're unable to access <clears throat> the things they were using or planning. Almost like anything that comes with the intention of harm or hurt 
or fear, division. Uh, anything that comes with those lower vibrational intentions, it's beginning to get muted. So where it was maybe sharp and crystal clear before, it's getting blurry, more and more blurry because their power is being cut off. Their energy source is being cut off. And it's allowing more of this love to ground in. It's allowing for events to unfold that assist freedom, that assist sovereignty, that assist unconditional love and humanity and connection to one another. Inviting in these higher beings as well as God to continue to do whatever is needed for the highest good of all, to continue assisting with this clearing and with the access and manipulation of power so that it can begin or it can continue to be put in the right hands. Seeing that the control, the manipulation, the greed, that need for power, its energy force is being cut off and it's being supported and assisted by the higher realms. So it's already done. And it's simply a matter of three dimensional time before we see all of the unfolding. But on the energetic plane, it's done. As I said, the cords are cut, their access to where they were gaining this energy the access to who is manipulating who, the puppet strings they were pulling. Anyone who doesn't have pure love in their heart is losing access to their power and losing access to their ability uh, to impact or harm anyone else. So as this area gets flooded with the unconditional love, and as we see their power, the power of the controllers being stripped away and muted and dulled, like blurred down, where it no longer has such a powerful force behind it anymore. As we see that happening, begin to envision the highest timeline for not only this area, but for the earth at large. And this is where this feeling of unconditional love, this beautiful pink and white light flooding in, maybe mixing in some gold too, feeling the gold energy coming down as well and just flooding that over the entire planet. Just as you wrapped Mother Gaia with a beautiful hug with your breath, begin to wrap Mother Gaia with this beautiful unconditional love and protection and support and unity. The pink, the white, the gold energy, sparkling, weaving, wrapping around and I'm going to leave you here for a moment to envision your idea of the highest timeline your idea of utopia your idea of what is possible on this planet because I'm seeing and feeling some really beautiful beautiful things but I know my vision might look different than yours. And we all get to co-create this together. So allowing yourself to 
Use the power of your consciousness and the power of the love within your heart and see what you wish to see in the world. How do people coexist with one another? How do they get along? What changes have taken place to the systems and structures so that they actually benefit everyone and not just some? Where has the imbalance of power shifted? So that it's no longer 1% controlling 99 but what if we could all inhabit this place in a way more balanced and unified way? Allow yourself to see it playing out before you as you project the most beautiful movie on your movie screen of your consciousness. A movie of what's to come. Maybe you already saw this in your vision of the future timeline for a loving, unified Earth. But if not, we'll sprinkle, sprinkle in health for all, peace and love, equal distribution of resources. true teamwork as one humanity unified together as the understanding of the fact that we are all souls we are all fractals of God incarnated in different places in different bodies with different shapes sizes colors beliefs and yet we are all one at the core So with one more deep breath in, just feel this sinking into your entire being and exhaling out, wrapping it around the earth once more. And we're going to begin to ground this in to the physical body, to the present moment. So as you wrap around the earth and you're still floating above looking down, Whether you see or feel a cord connecting you and pulling you down into your body, or whether you just gently see yourself floating back down from above the earth, now above your country, above your state or province, above your city, above your neighborhood, above your building, above your room, and back in your body. Taking a deep breath here and exhaling out. And another deep breath in and exhaling out. A deep breath into your heart space, feeling the loving energy that you have just been holding printing into your heart, continuing to breathe here and just getting the sense that 
this unconditional love, this energy you've connected to is here within you in your heart space. It's always accessible moving forward. And it's such a beautiful gift that you get to share with all you come in contact with. And then on your next few breaths, feel that unconditional love that has printed into your heart, flood up to the top of your head, your shoulders, your arms, all the way down to your fingers. And from your heart down, your stomach, your hips, your legs, all the way down to your feet and your toes. Like your whole body has become this vessel for this beautiful pink, white, golden light. And then bring your attention to your root chakra at the base of your spine. And we'll take a nice deep breath into your roots. And exhale to release. Your root helps to ground things in and all this work has been done it's already done on the energetic plane but it's beautiful to ground it into the body so that as you continue you feel this within you you get to carry it forward so one more deep breath into your roots breathing into that space and exhaling out And then feeling a cord of energy running from your roots down into the earth beneath you. One last time, we'll connect to Mother Gaia here and breathe into the earth, grounding in this unconditional love and exhaling out. Seeing that your cord of energy brings the love to that space right beneath you. And as you breathe into it, it gets sent all the way across the entire planet. One last time seeing that the entire earth is filled with this pink, gold, and white light, unconditional love. And then slowly as you're ready, you can start to bring awareness back into your physical body. Maybe this is just gently wiggling your fingers and toes. Gentle movements to your neck, wrists, ankles, and fluttering your eyes back open when you're ready. You can take your time, there's no rush. And as you return back into the room, just notice any of the sensations in your body that you're feeling. I highly encourage you to journal on this, reflect on this. I would absolutely love to hear what you felt or saw or experienced, so please leave it in the comments. Let us know what came through for you. Everyone receives their insight their downloads in different ways some people feel it so you might have felt a lot of the emotions some people are very visual like me so you might have seen different images and things playing out some are more auditory maybe you got the sense of hearing messages or voices or communication of things Whatever that is, there's no right or wrong. This is such a beautiful practice to connect deeper to yourself as well as really assist in, in deep planetary upgrades and healing for humanity. So thank you so much for taking part, being a part of this. As I said, please feel free to comment and share. I would love to hear what came through for you. I would highly recommend doing this more than once because there's no harm ever in sending more love into the world. Drink lots of water. You 
just did a lot of really powerful work in the energetic planes and the emotional body. Um, so even though you weren't physically moving and exerting effort, you did a lot and you were moving a lot of energy. So water will be your best friend. Um, hydrate lots, journal, reflect, and thank you for being here. Sending so much love.